Hi there. Welcome to another Code Sandbox tutorial. In this video, we'll be using dev containers in Code Sandbox to build a Next.js app that connects to a Postgres database. We'll start by creating a dev box and choosing Next.js as the template. Let's name it to do app and then create the dev box. The dev box has the default Next.js template running. So we'll just fade into an updated version that has the basic skeleton of our to do app. Now our app has a form to create a new to do, but the data is hard coded. So let's add the functionality for creating one. First, we need to set the server action to accept the text and log it to the console. And later on, we'll add the database insert. We have the text that will be submit as the to do name by the form, which is defined here. So let's log it in the console. After setting this as the action for the form, our logic is set up. Now, if I create to do test, it will display in the console, so we can see our server action is working. The next steps will be to add a Postgres database. We'll insert our to do, and then we'll load it from that database. To achieve this, we first need to set the database up in our environment. Then we need to allow our Next.js app to connect to it. All Code Sandbox dev boxes come with a default dev container configuration. You can edit this to set up your environment. In this case, we've started with a TypeScript based container, but we need more than just the Docker container image. We'll also need a Docker compose file and something that will let us add some required utilities to the container for the database connections and migrations. So our next step is to copy the existing image and create a new Docker file inside our dev container config. Inside this new file, we'll do a from to inherit our existing image, then add the command to install the Postgres client that we'll use to connect to the database and run queries. When you edit a container configuration file, you'll be prompted to restart and rebuild the container to implement your changes. But we have more configuration to do, so let's dismiss it for now. With the Docker file ready, we can now use Docker Compose to run the Postgres database. So let's create the Docker Compose YAML file inside the dev container folder. We'll add the next part of our configuration in this file. This is similar to any other Docker Compose, but instead of having multiple app or database containers running, we'll just have one of each. Our app container is where our dev container and terminals will run, while our database container will be where our database will work so we can run services. We can now create our first service, which we'll call app. We can use this service to specify where Docker should build, which is the current folder, then reference the Docker file for our configuration. Next, we have to specify volumes to mount the code base in the workspace directory of the container, relative to the Docker compose file. Then we'll specify a sleep infinity command. This makes sure that the container runs until we restart or rebuild and that all the terminals will be running inside the container as exec commands rather than a command. Then we're going to write a DB service. We need this to add Postgres, the default Postgres Docker image. To do this, we need to mount another volume. We're going to call this one Postgres data and configure it later. For now, let's set the path to mount it into the location where Postgres stores all of our data. We also need to set some environment variables. This is so we don't have to run some queries later on to create our user, password, and DB. We're going to paste in some simple examples, but these can be set to any string. Finally, we need to define our volumes in our Docker Compose because we defined a named volume in our DB service. If we don't do this, Docker won't create the volume when the Docker Compose starts. Now our Docker Compose and Docker file are both ready. The next step is to update the dev container configuration to use our Docker Compose making sure to specify our app service so it's used as the workspace, which is where we'll run the Docker container and install all of our dependencies. Then we reference the workspace folder inside the app container, which corresponds with the name of our app service in Docker Compose. Likewise, our workspace folder is also just called workspace. Now that we have all the required dev container configuration, it's time to click rebuild and restart. As soon as the dev container build finishes, we can see a new tab with the Docker Compose logs. These are showing that the dev and DB containers have started. And in the last line, it's telling us that the database system is ready to accept connections. 
As the database is running and available, we can start connecting the DB from our Next.js app. First, we need to install the Postgres package to allow us to connect to the Postgres database. We'll do this from a new terminal. Once it's installed, we need to import it into our project. Now we can set up the database connection using the username, password, and database name that we configured in the dev container. But we also need to set the port. We're using 5432, which is the default for Postgres. Finally, let's set DB as the host name to match the Postgres service name in our Docker Compose file. We should now be able to connect to the Postgres database. The terminal is telling us that the code has compiled, and if we refresh the preview, there are no errors. Let's now replace our list of to-dos with a fetch from the Postgres database using a wait and an async function. We're now seeing an error from the SQL connection when it tries to do a select. This is because we have not yet created the to-dos table. So let's move back over to the terminal. Earlier, we configured our dev containers with the Docker file. Our run command installed the Postgres SQL client, which gives us access to psql commands. We're now going to use one of these commands to connect to the Postgres database, using the parameters we configured in our environment variables. Then we just have to input our password, and we're inside the Postgres database, specifically our DB named Postgres. If we run slash dt to see all the tables, we will see an error because we don't have any yet. So let's paste a query to create the to-do list as a table. Our to-dos will have an ID and text. The ID is a primary key with a serial number, and the text will be limited to 255 characters and not empty. Now, if we run slash dt again, we can see the table we created, but it's currently empty. Even though there are no entries for our table, the error on our preview will go away when we refresh. But we still need some to-do items. So, let's create an entry. First, we need to add a query to the create to-do server action we created earlier to insert text input from the form into the database. Now, whenever create to-do is called during the form submission, our query will run. We also have to add the revalidate path in Next.js so that the changes are shown in the UI as soon as the post is done. When this line of code saves, you'll see an import for revalidate path from Next.js has been added to the file automatically. Now it's time to put our code to the test. We'll call our first item to do one again, click create and see instantly that it's created in the UI. If we run our query through the terminal again, we can see our new entry there too. But let's double check to be sure. And as we hoped, our second to-do appears instantly below the first, and our query in the terminal shows it was added to our database as our second entry. We've now successfully added a Postgres database into a Next.js app using dev containers in Code Sandbox. But if you've been following along, you don't need to stop here. You can keep building and turn our to-do list into something much more impressive using powerful VMs that can run all of your environments, configurations, code, and databases provided by Code Sandbox. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to share any feedback or creations with us on our community platform and tell us what you would like to see next. Happy coding.